You're listening to The Dental Guys, episode 95, Pioneers of Full Arch Zirconia, Where Do We Go From Here? with Conrad Rinsberg and Jack Morano. It's time for The Dental Guys, and boy, do we have a great panel discussion today with experts Jack Morano and Conrad Rinsberg. Zirconia has become the hottest thing in dentistry for full arch prosthetics. We got there with the help of these two experts. We talk about how digital is allowing us to move forward with more predictability. And is there a future material that's coming that could oust zirconia? We find out this week on The Dental Guys. This episode of The Dental Guys is brought to you by the Dental Crafters Network, your implant restorative connection. From surgical planning to patient-specific guides, quality implants, and final restorations, the Dental Crafters Network provides one relationship with infinite possibilities. Call 1-800-472-8302 today. That's 1-800-472-8302. Do you want to be able to understand, place, restore, and implement dental implants into your practice? Well, we've got the course for you, Restorative Driven Implants, taught by the Dental Guys. Restorative Driven Implants is coming to Des Moines, Iowa this fall 2019. Head over to RestorativeDrivenImplants.com right now to sign up for the next series. And welcome to this week's episode of The Dental Guys. I'm John The Dental Guy. And I'm Wes The Dental Guy. And Wes, uh, man, I, I never get sick of this, you know? Getting to hang out, getting to talk about some geekery. Learning. Getting to catch up, learning a little bit. Man, because uh, I'll tell you, there's nothing better at the end of a day of like hard dentistry sometimes when you get to just come in here and just like talk about kind of fun stuff. We record on Mondays. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that could be yeah. good or bad. Right, I know. <laughs> uh, that's what I was just saying. Like we had an interview. We're going to get to that in a little bit. <laughs> Great interview, and I'm, it was at uh, 6 p.m. Yeah, which is and nice. that's kind of, and for you, I have a little earlier day on Mondays. I have a normal day till <laughs> five, and getting there at six is hard. But you know what? It's good. You get, you know, you may have a tough day. You get in, you get to really kick back and enjoy talking to some cool people, which, which we did, and I'm looking forward to, especially coming off of this last episode we had mm. talking about full arch it, implant digital prosthetics. Now yes. we're going to get to talk about some more cool stuff. Yeah, with Mark, I, I feel like that. There's, this is the beginning of more, okay? So stay oh, tuned. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is the beginning of more with Mark Ludlow. Yeah. And then to beat it all, Mark, <coughs> excuse me, works with one of our guests. And so yeah. w- w- stay tuned for that. Yeah, they knew each other and co- we didn't even know they were connected. But right. before we get into that interview, which is going to be, I think you're going to really enjoy, um, we're going to talk about a kind of a special product feature that we've been working on for months Wes, months because when we review something we don't just you know use it for a day and then you know give it a five-star rating or something you know because Mm -hmm. someone told us to you know when we review something we we kind of geek out about it like we do everything else and uh we had seen this new product by 3m that had uh released which which really piqued our interest which is the new uh impregum super quick Mm. and you know Wes, you've used Impergum. You used Impergum for years. Oh, wow, right? a long time. Yeah, yeah. Came, came out of uh, residency. Uh, immediately started using Impergum. Uh, bit the bullet, bought the Penamex machine, and immediately started using Impergum. And really, um, game changer. Uh, game changer from a new dentist perspective, uh, because Impergum is one of the most uh, wettable. Um, hydrophilic materials, water-loving materials um, that we can use uh, in dentistry today, especially for crown and bridge impressions. Now, the disadvantages of uh, Impergum um, were a few things that you had to p- kind of put up with, and that was in the old days, it was like the taste, okay? So if you've listened to this and you're thinking, oh, Impergum, nasty, 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 uh, you, this the newer versions of Impergum that we have today, they don't really have that ether, you know, taste like. Th- I mean, there is some of that, but it's nowhere near, 
nowhere near. I've had it in my right. mouth, and it it's nowhere near that. So don't immediately disregard that. And then one of the other things about Amper gum that was always a big deal was that the rigidity of the material. And, and yep. 3M kind of cracked the <clears throat> science on this and really went and figured out how to make Amper gum, Amper gum soft, uh, mm-hmm. which is still rigid enough for material for triple trays, those type of things, but it doesn't scare you like it's going to pull somebody's teeth out, you know? Right. Um, we always knew, though, that Emperor gum was plenty accurate. It was the most accurate. Well, but actually, it's the, rated still today in cross-arch precisions for, for impressioning right. as the highest precision, highest accuracy material that we have. Also, when you talk about shark fin tests, John, mm-hmm. we talk about materials being under hydraulic pressure, being shoved down in right. and around your preps, okay, into the sulcus. There's no better shark fin. No better. Yeah, it still has the highest tear strength. Yeah. It, and, and, and so, but the third thing you were going to think and to mention and I what was. it kept me, honestly, from using Emperor gum on a routine basis was the set time. Well, that's because Be- you're a you're a um, you've I'd always, always been a VPS tri- user, and you're a triple tray user, right? And I and back before I was doing a lot with, some, with scanning, if I was using impression material, it was always going to be uh, using a VPS triple tray, like a quadrant, nice rigid triple tray. Triple tray. It's funny, and we talked I, about that on the show, and okay. I was always limited by the setting time and I wanted something rigid but I felt like I needed for my one to two units something that had a reasonable working and setting time and so here comes Impergum uh, super quick and 3M was kind enough to send us some uh, some material to, to get to try uh, and we tried it in our practices for months and we did it every possible type of restoration that that is indicated well, for I even this did material. Well, I indicated things just to push it. <laughs> yeah, and then we'll and then what that. we did, yeah, is we both we both did things to try to push it to see how how much how far could we go with working time, with setting time, mm-hmm. could you get a full arch out of it, you know, these types of things just because we wanted to see what it really what it really could do. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so, Wes, talk a little bit about your experience. I'll talk a little bit about mine. So the very first thing that I did was I put it in my normal emperor gum. Uh, John, I'll just have to be honest with you, I'm kind of the old man when it comes to single unit crowns. And it's kind of interesting because you're, you've been a triple tray user for fi- for years, and it's fine, it's fine. But I've never, <clears throat> I'm just going to say it, I've never used triple trays on a day-to-day basis okay for crown and bridge never in my entire career of dentistry now i'm not saying it's bad because i just didn't so guess what i what i did i've always did full arch shouldn't say always most of the time full arch for even my single units okay when i did emperor gum so i would syringe light body around the prep and then i would the 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 actual Pentamix machine was syringe the, the medium or heavy body material into the tray, and then I would seat my impression. Well, with with this material, you have th- so that's what I did is I applied the same technique that I did when I had my regular Emperor gum. Okay, so here's the interesting thing: is that you soon find out how fast 45 seconds is. Okay. You have yeah, 45-second 40, working time and two-minute setting right. time so is what this material full, has. For full arch, for full arch, it's too it's too fast for full arch. But that's not what yeah. we're trying to compete against here. So yeah, I that's not it. what the company is right. wanting you to use it for. So then I got I got our recommended the dental guys recommended triple tray, and it, it, we'll talk more about that later. But that's not the point here. We got the dental guys recommended triple tray, which is what John's been using for more than ten years in his practice. And we applied, I applied single unit um, methodologies to the triple tray using Emperor Gum Super Fast Polyether. Okay. And I actually was, actually was pleasantly surprised about the, the quality of the impression. It, it, it's unbelievable how wettable this material is. I, I always remembered 
hearing my resident director said, if there's just a little bit of water in the sulcus west, just don't worry about that because the emperor gum will work right along with that and it'll push that. <coughs> and, and I'm not saying you should have blood flowing around your preps, but what right. I'm saying is, is that for your day in and day out single unit cases, whether you're doing a triple tray or a quadrant arch, this is a go-to material. You know what's great about it? It's 45 minute, 45 seconds working time, which is enough for the single unit stuff in my hands. And then the two minute quick set. And the great thing about Emperor Gum is that it has this snap set. Now, mm -hmm. VPS does not have that snap set. So when we talk about snap set, for those that are listening to the show, we're talking about super geeky stuff here where you hit that 45-second working time, and then all of a sudden the set jumps up on the curve, and you start to get rigid material almost immediately. And why is that important? Well... It's important because if you move your tray during that set of VPS, you can get distortion. And one of the great things about Emperor Gum is you don't get distortion. That's why it is so accurate. So for me, it was just like the same regular Emperor Gum. But, and if you're an Emperor Gum user, you're thinking, man, I hate waiting the long period of time, which is what I hated with Emperor Gum. I didn't hate it. It was just that you had to wait longer. Okay, well, now we have something that is fast, quick for the day in and day out dentistry. I I talked to some reps, and John, I'll let you talk here just in a second. <laughs> I went ahead and talked to some of my reps, and I was like, "Who is this for?" And it's exactly what we just what I discovered. It's for I talked to some 3M reps. It's for the people looking for super accurate, super quick, single unit impressions, and yet is forgivable in some of those tough areas where we all deal with, which is water and liquids around our prep. It's, it's amazing. And so for me, um, I was impressed and I was even impressed with triple trays. I'm going to say something that came out of this was like when I was seated my crowns, you know, I'm coming from scanning, right? We have true scanners in our office and now I'm going to triple <coughs> trays and I'm thinking, well, how's this going to be? You know what? My crown's seated and my contacts were good. My margins were excellent. Um, and I, and I felt like I was delivering a quality product just was just like I do when I do my scanning, John. Yeah. Yeah. I, as a, as a long time VPS user, this is the product replacement, you know, I mean that that's, that's kind of the short of it is if you are a VPS user and you have thought about wanting to look at a material that is as fast as what you're getting from your VPS materials, um, but has that extra two things. Number one, hydrophilicity and more forgiveness uh, at uh, in those difficult situations. And, and number two, the true working time. Because that's one thing I really noticed with this product, Wes, is I started kind of playing with it, really pushing it. Mm -hmm. You know, when they say 45 true seconds. working time of 45 seconds, it really is. Because a lot of products will say, Working time, 45 seconds. Well, that's, once it hits the mouth, it's it's really starts setting. Well, this material doesn't. It will flow, it will continuously flow and move around for that entire 45. And then you, you see w perfect blending of the material, even when you insert your tray right at that 45. Because we really messed with it. We tried to see what we could do. And we found that it, it really was very consistently flowable and consistently blended well. Uh, at 45 seconds. And yes, for triple trays or quadrant trays, um, one to two units, you've got plenty of time with this material. And the accuracy is, is just ridiculous. I mean, you, you the margins, the tear strength on these margins is, is awesome. Um, and it's what I've seen from Impregum in the past. It's just something that to me, going to this set time allows for me to truly be able to, if I want to, eliminate uh, VPS from my practice because I have all the advantages of the set time. I have all the advantages of uh, the ability to have longer working time. I have better hydrophilic characteristics. Uh, I used it for some implant restorations also. I wanted to use it just with some quadrant mm -hmm. implant impressions uh, that, I, that I was doing just to, just to see. Mm -hmm. And I even had one case where I took uh, a VPS impression and I took uh, a uh, impression with the new Impergum Quick, mm -hmm. and I'll tell you there was there was no 
difference between the two, which I'll tell you, I'm very comfortable with VPS, so I didn't want to see a difference in an implant crown. I didn't want to see a difference. And, and in theory, this material should be even better when it comes to rigidity for implant restorations. Now, most times we're doing full arch uh, impressions for implants, but you know, when you push it to its limit, which to me is a, is a quadrant for an implant, mm -hmm. and for it to come back as, as nice as it did, and for it to equal my VPS, I, I, I couldn't be happier. So I think this is a product that, that deserves your consideration. If you're an Impergum user already, you should definitely feel comfortable moving to the faster set time. And using that in addition to what you're using with your with, for your full arch with your regular set, I think if you're a VPS user, you should consider it as an alternative. Try it out. And one of the cool things that 3M is doing as part of this review is they're giving us, you, they're giving our users, our listeners, I'm sorry, a chance to try this material out with some pretty good deals in order to see if it really works for them. Wes, talk a little bit about what they're doing for our listeners as a result of, of this. Right. So if you'll click the link in the description or if you're watching the Dental Guys on YouTube, you can go to the description below. But uh, www, yeah, 3m.com forward slash Dental Guys. And there'll be a promo code on there called Dental Guys ISQ. If you'll just tell your rep that... It's a buy two, get one. Okay, so buy two, get one. So I just ran some That's numbers. That's a deal, by the way. Okay, I just ran some numbers on this. So if you want to if you want to buy two, get one and maximize that deal, okay, for the time that this is available, okay, sorry, 3M, <laughs> but here's the deal, right. is that buy any two things and get one thing equal or lesser value um, and for free. Okay, so I, I kind of figured it up today. If you buy two base catalyst um, inter, uh, kits, okay, two base catalyst kits, you get go ahead and get one of those for free and then just order the syringable material separate because you don't use as much of that as you do the base catalyst because that's what's going in your tray. That's what you use most of. That's what's coming out of the pen and mix machine. And so it'll lower your cost on all of that by a third. So you want to save 33% by two, get one. And, yeah, um, it's a great deal. So that is 3M.com slash dental, dental guys. guys. And yep. uh, again, that promo code, uh, that, that's going to be a, a big savings. And, and I think it gives you a chance to try this material out, see if you like it. Mm -hmm. We're pretty confident you're going to like it. It's hard not to like this material. Uh, so give it a try yep. and give us your feedback. We want to know what you find from this material too. We don't want these reviews to just be our opinion and that's the end. If you got uh, good things to say, if you got concerns, we want to know about it. But we think 3M's had a home run with this material. We think you should definitely try it out. And with that said, um, in just a moment, we're going to be heading to our interview. So stay tuned for a quick word from our sponsor. This is Justin Gibber, and here is today's tip. We're now six months into the year. It's time to evaluate your personal and professional goals. How are you doing? Now look, don't make excuses for not reaching your goals. Remember, everything rises and falls on leadership. If you're not on track or feel you could have performed better, you need to hire a business or a financial coach that can help you. Remember, Michael Phelps, Elon Musk, and even Michael Jordan have or had coaches. For more information about today's topic and other dental related topics, head over to financiallysimple.com forward slash dentist. Until next time, make it a great day. This tip is for informational purposes only. Please speak with a competent financial advisor regarding your specific needs. Justin Goodbread is a registered investment advisor with Heritage Investors. Visit heritageinvestor.com, financiallysimple.com for additional information. We are here with a couple of esteemed guests that uh, we're very excited to have on the show. Because, and, and let me tell you a little background about who we have. So first of all, uh, let's let's get some names. Let's kind of figure out who these people are. This is Conrad and Jack. And Con we, we, we met these guys uh, before we tell you who they are. We were, we were at the AO meeting and we were talking to uh, one of the implant companies, major implant companies about uh, CONUS, which you guys have listened to the show. You know, we've had several shows talking about those types of restorations. And we were talking about some of the challenges with this and they said, you know, we got some, we got some guys that you need to talk to that are doing this uh, at a high level. And when a, when a major implant company, specifically 
uh, directs you and actually the rep walked us over to their booth. Uh, that's pretty interesting. And um, so then as we started to talk, we were, it was very interesting because we, we ended up um, having some connections with some of, their, some of the people that they've worked with and some of the schools they've worked with. So it was pretty interesting. And, and that brought us to where we are today. So Conrad Rensberg and Jack Morano are here and they're from Absolute Dental Services. We're glad to have you guys here on the show. It's a great pleasure to be an honor. Thank you guys. Here. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, the th interesting thing, if you guys listened to the last episode uh, with Mark Ludlow, um, kind of a cool connection too, because as we were talking with, uh, with Mark and we mentioned uh, Jack's name uh, and we said, yeah, he's going to be coming up on the show. And he said, Jack, he said, I talk to Jack almost every day. <laughs> and uh, I said, really, that's interesting. I said, so tell me about your connection with him. And so he kind of told us a little bit about the connection that you guys have had through re through the residency there a little bit and at UNC and then through some of the same uh, kind of docs you guys work together with. And Conrad, I know you know Mark as well. And we're excited about that show because we were talking to Mark. And see, I went to dental school with Mark. I, we were in the same class and studied together and got to know each other pretty well. And, um, you know, Mark was all on that whole show was talking about testing um, full arch scanning, digital scanning, and seeing how far can we push digital in the world of full arch implant prosthetics. So what we want to talk a little bit about today is we've got two, you know, very, very highly qualified lab technicians who um, do a lot of, I mean, would you guys say that's true? You guys do do a fair amount of uh, implant uh, prosthetics there at your lab? Yeah, well, we, we do a ton. <clears throat> we do a ton and really kind of specialize in those style of restoration. We, we started. Okay. So tell us a little bit about yourselves. Like, what are your kind of what are your jobs? Tell us with each of you, so we kind of know a little bit more about you guys and, and that type of thing. So I'll, I'll, I'll kick off with yeah. you know, Absolute was established in 1994, so we're celebrating our 25th anniversary this year. <clears throat> My journey with dental implants actually started with Lynn and Cooper at UNC in 2001, when implants were kind of still in the infant stages. You know, we were working externally hexed implants, ITI, and then. Astra in those days came out with the internally hexed platform and that was a big revolution in the industry but basically just you know the like I said the infant stages of what what implants are today so I would comfortably say that implants is the reason Absolute has been successful over the years and then when I met my friend Jack here a year and a half ago it was quite a revolution or evolution for us because we were never really big fans of zirconia. We, um, we were heavily invested in cobalt chrome layering technique and these kind of things, especially on the bigger cases. And Jack said, no, you know, there's, there's way better ways to do this. And so it's been quite an interesting journey for him and myself. <laughs> uh, we met one night, had a couple of bottles of red wine, I should say. It was a like a case. Glasses, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we really found out that our, our visions matched. You know, we were very close. We're almost like best friends the first night we met. So it's been a very synergetic relationship for both of us. You know, from that point. But yes, definitely, Jack. You want to tell me? Yeah, yourself? and I um, over my career, I did a lot with uh, materials research development, um, and I've always kind of been in that full arch, full mouth. Uh, kind of mode as a, as a technician. Um, it's not anything I ever asked for. It kind of just fell in my lap um, and, and really just loved those type of restorations, those type of cases, full mouth rehabs. And, and you know, you mentioned Mark. Mark has is, is been one of my best friends for, for years and years. I don't want to date myself right now or Mark, uh, but as soon as he finished, he finished the podcast with you guys and, and I got a text and he's like, I just finished a podcast and, and, and I heard you're doing one too. So I was really, really excited. He, uh, we've been together and, and, and doing just awesome dentistry, geeking out on dentistry for, for years. And, and he truly is remarkable. And a lot of what he does in the field is, is cutting edge kind of early pioneer stuff. So our relationship, you know, together, both Conrad and I, and, and, and Mark, uh, on the clinical side is, is really been able to give birth to some, uh, some great things. So mm -hmm. One of the th now I want to I want to focus on too a little bit of the training because yeah. I was looking I was kind of going John stalking <laughs> you Jack a little bit on the website because Conrad talks a lot about your your background too as far as where you got your training and Jack's got an interesting thing on the site talking about kind of some of the background training you've had as well and you know I noticed that 
You've d- it says Fellowship of the Mish Institute, um, uh, published with Carl Mish. That's interesting. I want to, I want to, and it talks about you've done some speaking as well. Is that so? Tell us a little bit about that because I, I think that when we're going to be talking about some of these types of restorations and implants, and I think it's important to kind of figure out well, who, who are we really talking to here? It's, <clears throat> so, it's really interesting. T- t- um, yeah, yeah. Tell us about your training. You with know, that. it's it's throughout the years with Carl Mish was an excellent opportunity I had when I was a uh, division manager at Micro Denzel. And we would start attending the Mish meetings back then. And, uh, I, you know, I'll never forget the, the first time I met him. It's interesting because when you're looking at these type of restorations or these type of rehabilitations, uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of educators out there. There's a lot of speakers. And, you know, there's a lot of similarities amongst the group, you know, the Dr. Lyndon Coopers, the Carl Mishes, uh, but then they definitely have their own distinct kind of theory. Um, and, and Carl Mish, I, I got to first meet him when I was at Micro, and it was the first time I got to do a case with him, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll never forget it. And a lot of what we were doing back then, and although he was very much... Uh, metal ceramics for these type of restorations, uh, in, in fact, exclusively uh, for years. I did finally get him to come into Zirconia a little bit uh, towards the end. But it was interesting, a lot of what we developed, you know, looking at materials and processes with CAD was while I was working with Carl Misch. And, and, it, and I believe it's his, um, his, last, his last edition, the last book, uh, a lot of the cases in that book and talking about digital uh, were cases that we had done together. So it, it was it was a great great honor, um, mm-hmm. you know. And, and we got to spend some good time. And I'll never forget when I really did get them the bite on a zirconia case because he was die hard. It was metal ceramics or it was nothing. And uh, when I first got to get him the bite, it was a really exciting day for me. Um, so so hmm. one of the things interesting is about six to seven years ago, um, I made a trip over to Asheville, North Carolina. Okay. Uh, Astrotech um, was putting on a conference. It was very, very small. My surgeon and I went. My rep told me about it. And Lyndon Cooper was speaking to a small room of restorative dentist, uh, prostodontist, periodontist. And Lyndon Cooper gave a talk. And then there was a periodontist there at UNC that gave a talk. And and it and it was uh, Sir Lennon's talk was on uh, zirconia full arch monolithic restorations, and so here I am sitting here watching this, and I'm thinking, man, okay, we've been doing zirconia crowns for for quite some time, and now we're talking about full arch, you know, <laughs> and then he starts showing like, you know, the possibilities today because. You know, Zircon Zahn had the copy mill and doing it by hand. I immediately text my laboratory. And then the next thing you know, we're in Atlanta. We're learning from Sandy there at Zircon Zahn. So right. how much... Zircon Zahn. Yeah. How much there, how much were you involved in, in that oh. at that time? Because, I mean, it seemed like that, to me that like he was hot incredible. Hot. Right. That, that whole... That whole thing, and, 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 I, and I do this, and, and, and I do a lot of speaking for years. I spoke for Ivoclar, um, and now more recently speaking a lot for Argon. Uh, so, you know, for, for years I've been lecturing and always on the road, and, and whether, you know, it's, it's changed. So usually always something digital, you know, I'm lecturing on. I remember there was times I would ask how many people, you know, it would be 200 people in the room in a lecture, and how many people had a scanner, and a handful of people would raise their hand. Now today, I don't ask the question. And the reason why I mention that is, is you know, when you've seen Lyndon, if we go back that many years and even plus, and I give all credit to, and I still to this day, uh, give all credit to Enrique Osteger and Zircon Zahn, because he was mm-hmm. really the first one to start putting the full arch zirconia, uh, you know, together. And, and I remember the first time I seen it, and Enrique Osteger is incredibly brilliant, He's incredibly creative, and the first time I seen it, I was just in love. And, and back then, there was uh, he had the copy mill system. That's how you did it. So fast forward about a, a year or two, and, and laboratory desktop scanners are, are starting to emerge, right? Uh, there was dental wings. There was three-shape. And so the, the question we posed to ourselves at that point 
is how do we do what Enrico Steger is doing, but with three shape, right? right. Because at, at that time it wasn't being done. It was it was basically kind of him by himself in in this in this kind of niche that he created or this this new world, and we we figured it out. Um, you know, I tell everybody I've I've failed. Uh, you know thousands of times both personally and professionally uh you know and i kind of laugh about it i'm i'm that open i don't have ego or anything like that and and those failures that that i'm i'm kind of so proud of they're what brought a lot of the successes so back then if you look at uh what linden was doing um that was early on that was coupling with a research study that was with brian limmer and julie elpers at unc and to date, as far as I know, it's it's the biggest, and I and I may be wrong, but as far as I know, it's probably the biggest full arch zirconia study that's that's taken place. Uh, it was followed up, and uh, the patients were recalled by uh, Kevin Lim, uh, who's at UNC faculty now, and and those arches are all still in. Those are some of the original early on arches that we did with Lyndon Cooper and UNC, and early on, looking back at it. Uh, you know, I tell everybody the first PMMA, digital full arch PMMA we ever did uh, for an implant case, you know, back then we thought it was the most incredible thing you've ever seen. I mean, everybody was high-fiving each other and it was, you know, a big kind of, uh, you know, moment because at this point nobody's, nobody's done that yet. And looking back at it, and I still have the slides and no, you guys won't see them. <laughs> it is the <laughs> worst thing you've ever seen in your life i mean it is just nasty um i look back at it and i say I, I i can't believe that was the case that was the one that we were jumping up and down giving high fives about but back then it was a huge deal mm. um mm. since that time uh we've looked at it we could we could talk for for hours about the progression of not only the techniques for these type of restorations but also the materials mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. they've they've really progressed to where now uh you know conrad are looking and and i and we could talk later about some of the new modern materials that we're doing cases with now uh that we're seeing exceptional results with yeah, so let's talk, let's talk yeah. about that giving you more and options. i want to i want to dive into that a little bit because i remember the ao back in it was probably 2010 Okay, so Lyndon gets goes to the a, to the Astra corporate forum, and he's presenting this stuff at the AO, and it's not on the main podium. It's not even close to that yet. They won't even allow it. <laughs> so he's at the corporate forum, and he starts showing a few cases of this full arch zirconia, and the room was like full of prosthodontists, like metal ceramic guys and girls, and they're. And they're just looking at it with disdain. And in fact, as soon as he finishes, any questions, like 16 hands go up. And they are grilling him, which is what I love about the AO. Because they're like, so one guy just gets up and he says, I want to know exactly what your failure rate is. Exactly. And he's like, well, we've had some failures. And he wouldn't give him a number. He's like, what's the number? And, and Lyndon's like, I'm not giving you a number. <laughs> He's like, it's, it's early. It's early. And the guy says, well, what do you do when there's a failure? And Lyndon goes, oh, we just print another one. We just make another one. You know? yeah. and, and the guy's like, well, that's just, this is educational. This is not for the real world. And this was so, there was a lot of, of pushback initially, as, I'm, as I know you guys, I'm sure, know. So where are we well, now? I think it's interesting, John, that. you mentioned you know, about what, pushback because that, uh, Conrad is that pushback guy for Jack. Yep. Right. And I just wanted to yeah, say yeah. that, you know, when Jack joined me, we were anti zirconia. And wow. purely because of aesthetics, I think that was our biggest right. you know, our biggest concern because we do a lot of we did a lot of cobalt chrome with layered ceramics and those things are spectacular. I mean it's it's pure artistry and Jack and I always argue about artistry versus craftsman. But we create everything from scratch. Mm. When we work on zirconia, mm. and I think a lot of people, including myself, missed the true value in zirconia and that's prototyping and you mentioned right. that you know the first prototype was a huge deal because i think our goal is to always help our clinicians not to have post delivery issues remember the days when we did a full rehab mm -hmm. and the patient closes you know and the bites eight millimeters open and <laughs> takes you four hours to grind the bite in we right. were talking about this the other mm -hmm. day our full arch cases now is more predictable than single anterior oh, crowns. It's 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 incredible. And I'm just talking day of delivery. Mm -hmm. you know, there's more things, tissue, contour, you know, emergence, everything else. It could be wrong with the single crown. But by the time with the we get to the final delivery with zirconia, 
we have a full digital workflow and we have all these checks and balances to get to that point. We'll put three or four prototypes in if we need to, and we can print a prototype for mm. you know, 20 bucks nowadays, and it takes 15 minutes to, to move some teeth. But we never go to the final until we know bites verified. And if we have a really tough patient, we'll do a PMA with, you know, we use Harvest yep. Panels, Temp Aesthetic, excellent material, exceptional. And you can deliver a prototype that looks almost better than what we could do with Zirconia a few years ago. Jack mm, and I yeah. spoke in Chicago on the prototyping and the, and the digital workflow, and he made a set of temps for this patient. And I was a little upset with him. I was like, you know, how are we going to copy this in Zirconia? It looks because, you know, composites look really good in the mouth. Mm -hmm, and I'll mm -hmm. tell you, he made a case out of Arjun's HD+, Plus, which is a monolithic right. Zirconia, not even a transitional Zirconia, that blew that composite out of the water. So it's a whole new era for us. You know, as a lab owner, it's all about being predictable. You know, remakes cost everybody money. Every time you have to get mm -hmm. a patient back to do an adjustment or if something breaks or a bite is <coughs> off or bite adjustment, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's work you're not getting paid for. And I think that prototyping has helped us to be the, very the, predictable. The prototyping, I think, has, has helped a lot. You know, on the, what we've seen clinically, you know, you have the early adopters and then you have the, the pushback, right? And you had that from, from two sides, from technique, which would be digital, going from analog to digital, and you had it from material standpoint, and then you had it from the technical side, and you had it from the clinical side, where technicians were pushing back hard on digital and the materials that went along with it. You also had on the clinical side that same pushback. So if you look at Lyndon Cooper, early adopter, pioneer when we're talking about materials and technique. Mark, very much early adopter, very much pioneer when we talk about the same. Uh, you know, go back to Carl Misch, who just, same thing, thought it was absolutely the worst material, and it was. Metal ceramics, and that was it, period. And it wasn't even up for it wasn't even up for discussion until, you know, we got to spend, you know, some time together and restored, you know, had quite a few cases on our belt that he really kind of let me in. And, and, and then, you know, kind of did it with, with a grin, uh, which, which I'll take. That, mean, that, that meant he liked it. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I think the main advantage with this is that Jack and I do this, this talk together. We call it You Are the Next Master. And I think what Zirconia has done has allowed all technicians to be able to create true artistry. Where mm. I think full rehab work was was kind of you know it was it was just for the just for the few and right. far between. Not many labs did it, but nowadays they still you know, they can. still need the the laboratories. Both the laboratories and the clinicians um, need to be well versed in these type of restorations. I was getting ready to say, is that a good thing or a bad yeah. thing? Because <laughs> no. because I mean, like the the classic thing that John and I talk about is that the advertising for these products over the years mm. have made it seem like, hey, yeah, we are actually closing the gap between what is like exceptional, like unobtainable dentistry yep. to right. do to now everybody can do this. Yeah. But and I think the basic skill level... It is getting closer. It's getting closer. but It's the, getting closer. The, the problem is that, and, I, and it's a really good point, because I think some labs are now doing full arch restorative options that would never have considered that when they had to layer the entire case. Right. So the difference between you, know, I, I did my qualification in the late 90s, and it was all layering ceramics. <clears throat> so everything mm -hmm. we did, we had to build from scratch. Right. So contouring, line angles, you know, height of contour, everything had to be done where now everything is computer generated. And this is kind of Jack and my <clears throat> contention here is that difference is still artistry. Mm. The last, Lyndon Cooper actually said that we, we name playing Lyndon a lot here, but he told me in 2002, the difference between a really good case and an average case is the last five minutes a technician puts into contouring, totally. the final contouring. Mm. Yeah. So true. So, and I, I learned a lot from that because that's truly where the difference. The difference is now that last five minutes, and that's what Jack taught us. Kudos to you, my team. Is the last five minutes is now basically the whole part of the case. Everything mm. else is done by mm. machine. 
you know, but without the, the last fight, uh, Bob, the, it's di- not. the difference is it's it's <clears throat> more trainable now than it mm-hmm. ever has been. Um, if we look at, let's just look at years ago when we would do one of these metal ceramics cases. It was it was years of of mass, uh, you know, becoming a master in that in that restoration. And it still wasn't as predictable as anybody would have ever liked. If if we look at it, we would do these massive frames, uh, and if you were if you got it to cast, it was a miracle. And then on top of that frame, we would do a diagnostic wax up mm. right over the metal. Remember six through eleven. Then we would put acrylic blocks in the posterior quadrants to try to get the bite. And every time it went, you know, it went out, you'd you'd grab another bite, you'd grab another bite, you'd grab another bite. Then you would build up all this ceramic on it. Uh, again, years of, of, you know, work and training to get, you know, an individual to that level. And then when it gets to the mouth, you don't even know if it was 100%, you know, going in. Yeah. Even at that point, it was still kind of... And hours yeah, worth of work. Yeah. Hours and hours <clears throat> worth of work. If we look at what we have now between the, the modern materials and the modern techniques and digital workflows, I can... Coming, you know, from my background, uh, in Conrad's background, from where we were, uh, actually train and teach the technicians, which is which is very important. It's what we lecture on. It's what we speak on, to to be able to do a lot of this. And and you know, it's it's more. I would say it's more obtainable for mm-hmm. technicians Definitely. to acquire the skill yep. than it has <clears throat> been before, which is really really interesting. And on the clinical side, with the prototyping. And the prototyping is something, you know, we started that off with Mark, um, you know, years and years and years ago. We even with the, with the dual. So we used to call it kind of roughly, I mean, don't laugh, but we used to call it the, the one was pretty and the one was ugly, right? So we would do two <laughs> prototypes. The pretty one would go in the mouth and the ugly one would be adjusted and come back to me in the laboratory. You know, when yep. we look at that, and that, that became... Um, you know, part of the workflow of the process for these type of restorations very early on. And it doesn't even have to be on implants. It could be on dentition. Uh, that master record, which became your bite, uh, your verification kind of jig, uh, your gingival architecture, your tooth arrangement, your incisal edge, your midline. I mean, I think one of the biggest things that happen in dentistry in the last 10 years is that ability to create those prototypes Um, because you're seeing into the future it goes in the mouth you're looking at the case complete as it stands right and maybe it's good and it goes in the mouth and 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 maybe it doesn't and then you you adjust from there but you actually got to put it into the patient's mouth Um, where it's even a di- it's a diagnostic, a wax diagnostic, up yeah, with sha- with patient pictures. Yeah, it's, and that's it's the, the ultimate. Yeah. And now I, we're yeah. we're even getting any further. What, what sorry to interrupt, but what, what mm. Dries is doing, where we're actually designing within the patient images mm. in real yeah. time, and yeah. that's taking it to a whole nother level. And, you know, and I think if you take it one step back with guided surgery solutions, we can now do guided surgery, <clears throat> convert the denture in a latch position off a diagnostic wax up. So the link this digital technology giving us on the final yeah. is actually going back all the way to the surgical stage. You know, and I've, I've seen in the last three or four years that the lab tech, the restorative, and the, and the uh, surgeon have become a much tighter team. Everybody is now actually mm-hmm. looking at this from a diagnostic. What we used to do was take the pre-ops, put some implants in, make two you know, immediate dentures, and go chair side and try to stick in the patient's mouth with the nose-chin position. Now everything is done digital. We plan the surgery based off the diagnostic wax up. We then take that converted hybrid. That will become the prototype. The prototype comes back and we simply copy that back into our zirconia. Right. And I think, I think where I missed this in the beginning, especially this digital link we have with zirconia, and now that the materials are aesthetic as well, it's a huge bonus. But the digital link equates to efficiency. You know, we don't mm. sit here and wax a diagnostic wax up for five hours and charge $800 for it. And clinically, zirconia now, a full art zirconia, our full art zirconias are mid 4,000s, yeah. which for that kind of work, five years ago, that quality of work was a $9,000 case. Mm. And, and the mm. reason is we can do it efficiently. Jack, yeah. Jack popped out three cases one day, yeah. three full arches, and it's world-class quality. So... 
you know, you can put a world-class case in for four and a half thousand dollars. That's a pretty good day. And now the clinicians can make money off this. And we've restored these hybrids in three clinical appointments. Right. This is helping so many patients. Yeah. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. and you so, know, that's so when you so, so when you talk when you talk about the technique and and the closing of the gap <clears throat> as far as you know the the planning, the prototyping, and all these things are making it more predictable, as you said, you know, making it more predictable. It's not necessarily making it easier, as you said. It's yeah. not easy, but it's just more predictable and it's easier to train and it's easier to understand. Um, but I want to drill down a little bit into the question then of the material. Right. Because, you you know, there there was a time where Lyndon was being called out for zirconia <laughs> not being the way to go. And then we, we kind of got to where people felt very comfortable with it. We started seeing research published on it. We started seeing longer term, you know, case series being published. And so should we be assuming that, you know, we're going to really be specific here, assuming we want uh, a, a, let's just say a maxillary full arch aesthetic uh, fixed restoration is zirconia the material of choice now uh if so why if not why not i would say i would say absolutely um and it it goes to kind of the history of not just the the technique but the material kind of advancements that have happened along the same time um you know on my end i've always been working kind of ahead uh, usually a little bit faster than the manufacturers or fancer, uh, faster than the software developers. And, and Mark, too, it's, it's a lot of these things that we do today or utilize today or the techniques we do today are based off of something that we've already tried. You know, in, in, in kind of his early pioneer, early adopter role, you know, when you mentioned that that one gentleman kind of called out Lyndon Cooper, uh, you know, it's funny because that same gentleman is probably doing full arch zirconia today using the techniques developed based off of those failures. Um, right. And it's, it's, it's really remarkable. If we look at the, the material advances on zirconia, and, and I'll be right there with you, and, and I'm an old brush and ceramics guy, uh, it, was, it was ugly as hell. Uh, and, but we did what we could to bring what life we could kind of wrangle and, and, and yank out of it. Uh, there wasn't that much. There, there really, really wasn't. Um, and then, you know, looking at different type of failures and, and what went wrong and what went right. Uh, but Jack, let me give you some pushback on that answer. So, and I agree with Jack. We're kind of Jack. connected at the hip here. I think, yeah, we can't move too far away from each other. So I think... Jack is right. We've passed the questions on strength and distal extensions and you know those kind of things that that we used to question. I think right. the, the initial questions are now answered. It's a very solid base. Yep. The aesthetic questions are getting answered with the new multi layers and the right. you know the the, uh, the more aesthetic uh, translucent zirconias. What I've started seeing is that more and more of my surgeons are questioning the occlusion. You know, mm. that really rock hard occlusion. Remember, right. you know, we, we spoke to a by one day, and he's like, I don't <clears throat> like this anymore. So, mm. on your answer, the way I would answer that question is in some cases, yes, zirconia is the best option. Right. But I think Jack and I both believe that there's a big revolution coming. And mm. I think. Let's talk about that because, you know, uh, Dr. Yeah. Picos is speaking pretty hard on this right now. They they are doing two unlike materials. They're doing zirconia yep. for maximum aesthetics in the maxilla, and then they're right. doing bar-wrapped in acrylic mm. in the lower. Right. And that's actually where John and I are at right now. We're accepting yeah. Yeah. some of the disadvantages of we're going to accept Ooh. some D-bonds of teeth, yep. and, and we're but, dealing with those things. Well, and, and, and To have a stress breaker. But I know where you're going, I think, is talking about materials that have inherent... Uh, characteristics that would be stress breaking. Is that is that kind of what you mean? That that's the revolution? Yeah. So we we started working with nano ceramics, you know, crystal ultra, um, mm. you know, on trilol bars and those right. kind of things. And <clears throat> Jack and I took one of these pucks because uh, it's a uh, you know what's it a seven hundred megapascal shear strength, five hundred right. megapascal. Yeah. So it's pretty high shear strength. It's a thirty percent polymer, seventy percent glass. And we looked at each other and said, why can't we just mill a monolithic structure out of this material because mm. you have a very rigid structure you right. have 
you know, 70% glass in it. So you basically have a monolithic zirconia-like material, but you have micro flex in it. And I think we, we spoke about this at the AO. You know, <coughs> we spoke to Jeff Canales, right. and he brought up the same issue. I'm concerned about this zirconia just banging into the occlusion. It's, it's come up more and more now. Um, I feel the industry is, is still split about 50-50 uh, between double large zirk, and you know, putting in the the you know dissimilar material, the softer material, um, on the conservative side of the house, I will see that a lot. Um, we have a replacement for that bar wrapped acrylic, yep. which that's the really nano ceramics, an amazing solution, and we got all the reasons why. On the double arch zerk, uh, and again, it's 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 about fifty fifty. There's guys that'll still double arch zerk all the time now. <clears throat> We haven't gotten to the point. Well, actually, we have. I mean, there's a lot of double arch zerks that's been in the mouth for a long time. But What's that? What do you when, mean by a long time for our listeners? Oh, it would be. I mean, it's going to be since since I've been putting them together. I mean, I'm going to say there's double arch zerk in the mouth. You know, up to seven years right now, seven to eight years in the early, very early on stages. Mm-hmm. Um, My and oldest, it would still my be oldest there. one is six. Six years mm-hmm. double arch zerk. Yeah. Yep. You see, and I, I would think that the questions now is becoming what are those cases doing to the implants? Right. Versus the question used to be will they break, will they chip? We know prosthetically it holds up functionally, it's a good material, but the question becomes, you know, how is it destroying right. our implants? Well, because with, it's a complete with, static that's static right. relationship. <clears throat> I mean in in that relationship there's nothing that we would know to give yeah. right so what is actually taking yeah. taking all so, this impact so are you guys seeing problems no we're no we're not because we're but not we're getting surgeons questioning the makeup especially our right. imperial guys are saying oh, i'm not sure i like this occlusion but does occlusion oh. kill implants right and i think we've all oh we we can't we can't go down, go down that route <laughs> and so but that's what these guys are using but we're thinking yeah. like if something's we've got to have a fail point Right. That's right. 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 We're more concerned right. not about implant failure. I mean, we'll just kind of be straight up brass tacks mm-hmm. here, but we are concerned about components. Yeah. Right. You know, we're concerned about, you know, connections and we're concerned about screws and we're concerned about, you know, just componentry. So I get it. Whether you believe right. implants are going to fail, whether you believe components are going to fail, the point is taken that you don't have anything to give. Right. Well, it's the cement um, layer. So, so talk yeah, about well, this, the, the these newer materials. Layer, interestingly enough, so I just want to touch, touch base on that when we're talking about failures. Um, complications do include uh, screws loosening, screws fracturing, mm. um, depending on who's cementing it. Now, that was part of Kevin Lim's study that he did, the follow-up study to the Limmer Elper study, um, was what are complications? I'm recalling all of these zirconia arches what am i seeing uh screw fracture was a big one uh screw loosening not as much debonding as cylinders as you would think at least not on Mm. on my side of the of the aisle more on the zircon zon side but it depends what you're cementing um i cement with multi-link and and what i found the old cement now if if you look at cement that was a carl and carl mish technique put 10 coats of dye spacer on there because I want the cement to break and give free before mm-hmm. anything else does, right? Um, what we're finding now, where the, the, the cements have advanced, where I, I've actually seen the zirconia go before the cement mm-hmm. bond sure. between the tie base and the zirconia does. And that's remarkable. And that just goes to play yeah. to the bond between those materials. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's, it's really, really something. But, you know, my, my question is always, and I get this, you know, what do you do in your mom's mouth? Right yeah. now, and <clears throat> you guys said wrapped acrylic over titanium. Jack and I just wrote an article on wrapped acrylic, the end of an era, because I do think wrapped acrylic over titanium is a thing of the past. Right. I, I really think it's, it's, you know, there's so much. You can probably guarantee three to four years is a full rewrap on one of those things. And... The problem with that, once again, is not rewrapping it because that's pretty simple. Take it out, send it back to the lab, we wrap it and send it back. It's not very expensive either, but you have no digital workflow. And I think the digital workflow is what makes those recoveries efficient because if, if something fails and you can pick up the phone and say, <clears throat> patient ABC failed, I can make you a new one, get her in in a week, take the old one out, throw it away and put a new one in. Nice I've saved key. you clinical chair time 
you know, two or three appointments in some cases. We start missing the bite and deal with those issues. So, so what do you right put now, in mom's mouth? So right <laughs> now, my, my favorite, and I think Jack agrees, what we like to do is we use Trilor for the substructure. We mold the Trilor, cement that on. Trilor bar. Trilor bar, Trilor 95, I think yeah. is the material. It's also from Harvest. Um, place some, some um, tie bases in that, cement it, and then dual scan, and then design the tooth structure, the prototype that was approved by the patient is then dual scanned onto that model. And then we mold the tooth structure in a monolithic horseshoe that cements over the trilor. Mm. Now, if you, if you do that with, with a nano ceramic like yeah. Crystal Ultra, you, you're basically taking a Funaris tooth, and this is probably a, a tough you know, comparison, but it's kind of what it's about. You're taking a Funaris tooth, and instead of having 12 individual teeth held on by acrylic and acrylic only mm. you have a horseshoe structure this mold cemented on the frame and then we simply go and wrap our acrylic from the bottom the main mm. advantage with that <coughs> is that you get chemical bonding mm. so if you look mm -hmm. at the weakness in a wrapped acrylic over titanium right. acrylic doesn't bond to titanium and those high strength teeth don't bond very well to injectable acrylics so so I think that might be the future, and I think you know well, as the materials the, get better, that might actually replace the cornea right. at some point. And then the nano ceramic in itself is a is an amazing material, but to set that on the shelf for a second and come back to the technique, really the 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 most important part of of the restoration is the fact that the the tooth arrangement keys into the bar and is cemented onto the bar mm -hmm. that that basically the number one reason and and we could why wow, I, I, we could we could do this if we had mark bring mark in here we, we could probably run this for hours and go on and on because i kind of geek out over this stuff and get really really excited but um you, you know, it removes the number one failure from the equation, which is the tooth pop. Mm -hmm. And then you get to the material, and the material is 70% glass, 30% composite. It's incredibly strong. It's incredibly aesthetic. Um, I, I really do, and, and we've processed a ton of these now at this point. And we might just need to say this, you know, I think uh, some of the listeners might say, well, we've heard of nanoceramics, and there were some original ones on the market that Bad. failed. Yeah, I don't yeah that's <coughs> what people are going to remember. Yeah. They're going to go, oh, Love yep. Ultimate. Love yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no. brand name. You did, so. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. No, I mean, it's, it's not. Yeah. I mean, everybody, it's just, it's just exactly. a product. Yeah. And, you know, everybody and knows it went a, off the market. That was a huge failure. You know, Crystal Ultra, and, you know, we don't get paid by these companies. We just use what we what we know and see as the best. Crystal Ultra has got about a about a four-year track record now. Yeah. I think there's some cases in the mouth yeah. for four years. And I've talked to some clinicians, which is, you know, it's kind of tough sometimes because beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But they say after four years, you can't tell that that case has been in the mouth. Where a wrapped acrylic over titanium, after four years, you know it's yeah. been in the mouth. It's gotten mm -hmm. pretty nice. So mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of, lot of potential good that can come from this material. Jack and I would love to see a full monolithic crystal ultra, if I can call it that, or a kind of style material, yeah. Yeah, so instead of using <coughs> a zirconia puck, mull this out of, out of you know, pure nano. Put your components in and, and put some pink pink acrylic around it. The advance is going to replace. Uh, so. Do you think not it's going to replace zirconia? Not FDA cleared, but do you think it's going to replace zirconia? Ah, uh, I, I I think it's going to head in that direction. Yeah, I, th I, think so. I think it's I think it's going to. And the advancements are coming so quick right now. Uh, in zirconia alone, you know, from from the ugliest almost unusable material, where the so-called masters of the day in the technical world. We're giving uh, lectures on how to how to make a zirconia coping look good because it was so opaque. To now using multi-layered zirconia that's gradient within the puck uh, that rivals Emacs, mm. right? I mean that's that's it's huge, it's huge. Emacs yeah, by and now. that's on the multi-layer. And if you look at if you look at a product like HG Plus, which is monochromatic. Uh, but it's high strength, high translucency, mm. right? That's Where, 1250 yeah, twelve hundred fifty. Yeah, I mean, it's it's amazing. Now those advancements in zirconia, the majority of them have all come, you know, within the last couple of years here, about the last two years, and very very quickly. Uh, we went down the ugly road of kind of cubic zirconia and five Y, and and you know, I'm not a fan. Uh, and, you know, so now we've circled back around and, and got to where we're at today with multi-layers and high translucencies, yep. which, are, which are great. But 
I think, you know, and it's not something that's going to be, you know, happen next year, but as we're progressing, we're already seeing the nano ceramic. I think we're going to see a material like that yep. that's going yeah. to be, um, you know, easy to handle. It's, it's going to be, you know, kind of user friendly as far as the fabrication process goes, mm-hmm. uh, but it's going to be a kind of a kinder, yeah, kind of gentler kind material, of I think, is, is kind of the writing on the wall. What mm-hmm. that will be, I don't know, but. But I would expect that that somebody somewhere is is got an idea or is going to be working on it. It's going I, to be. I, if I could make a prediction, just you know, being in this industry for way too long, if you can tell by my hairstyle, <laughs> the the next evolution in our in our industry is the next zirconia. Yeah, the uh, we, next we've zirconia. We've gone from yep. acrylic over titanium to zirconia. Cobalt chrome layered has been not very well adopted because it takes a lot of artistry yep. and a lot of work. But I don't, I don't see zirconia be around for more than maybe four or five years. I think there's going to be a better material. And mm. nanoceramics is taking leaps into the right direction. Yeah. So you feel and like that it's, 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 a da- it's going to be a dated material. In 10 years, we'll look at zirconia yep. and say, man, look what I've, we started with, yeah. and now look what we have. Exactly. That's, yeah, I think, I think in 10 years, we're going to be... So it's the bar be... wrapped in acrylic... Yeah, of right. twenty to 2000s, right? I mean, right. we should well. Well, the thing that that I think that I think is is now, and this is all this is all like what we. So what's interesting to me, okay, and and I'm gonna push back a little bit because I'm what, here. If we go. Li- ever I'm, I'm a cowboy. Show, John's a. <laughs> Wes is a cowboy, and he's an early adopter, and I'm an old person. Okay. Okay. So there's no published data. Yep. Right. Okay. <laughs> And so you guys, I think it's interesting, <laughs> and this is where I'm going to kind of burn you a little help bit. Me, help me, is Jack. Because, and I want to know what you think about this. May, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just an old guy. But the it's interesting because you see, like, I feel like 10, 15 years ago, the labs were responding to the research. So material would come out. It would be researched. Then the lab would then get a hold of that, and they would uh, make an application. Right. And that was what Lyndon was basically doing with zirconia. And even he was pushing it to where things were being done before we really had long-term data. Now we're kind of just catching up with long-term data on zirconia. Now it just so turns out we were right. That's yeah. awesome. You know, a lot of times there have been materials that haven't worked out so well. So I guess I'm like, I, the thing I worry about is you guys are like, man, we're turning these things out. We're at Trilord Bars and with Crystal HD. But are you worried? about the fact that we did have things like Lava Ultimate. Are you concerned about that? Or is it really the difference is that as we started the conversation, is that if there's a problem, that because of this digital workflow, because of this rapid prototyping, because of the ability to correct failures, that you go, you know what, if there's a problem, we feel so much more comfortable with how we can correct that problem we that can, it we becomes a less of a concern about the risk versus your cobalt chrome and your layering and your hours yeah. and hours and hours to replace the restoration. Is that what's changed and why we're becoming more experimental versus waiting for five, 10 years of data? Let me answer this because I think yeah. I learned a lot from Jack on this one. I think the difference now is we have so much data before we go to the final that we're not taking a tooth set up and throwing a bar inside and then finding out we don't have enough acrylic to support the teeth and those kind of issues. Our prototyping is allowing us to look in in the digital world at thickness, connection thicknesses. Yeah. You know, Do we have enough to do this? So I'll give you a little pushback on research on that one because I think a lot of times in our industry, you know, we're either the bleeding edge or the leading edge. And you know we've had the issues. You just think of think of the evolution of Emacs. Right. You know we had Eris, we had Emacs One or Empress One. Eris was yeah, Eris was a disaster. Eris was was a disaster. And you know everybody blamed everybody else, but at the end of the day, we came up with one of the best materials I think history, and that was Emacs. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I think it's going to take a little bit of. You're going to have to be a little bit of a cowboy maybe to to go out there and see. I think. What what swung it for us the nano ceramic is and we call digital dental it's crystal ultra yeah. their product and we said we want to mold these monolithic pure monolithic without the trilo structure and they were like yeah there's no way yeah and we mold one on one of our milling units it's it's a tough thing to mill you couldn't break it there's no way you can mm. take it even by squeezing the distal extensions together that you can break it by hand 
which is which is very you know it's it's very interesting if you look at that right because now think about this we've we've gone from let's say seven eight thousand dollars for a zirconia to four and a half thousand on a zirconia world-class zirconia i'm not just talking right. about any garbage you can buy anywhere i'm talking about when we go to one of these nano hybrids and we're you know we're headed we're in the future now you're looking at these cases mid 2000s really? for world class restorations so i think the the one thing that i'm very excited about the way we are in our industry is that it's becoming more economical and more predictable right. for the patients and the clinicians but it's making the labs more efficient it's making us more well, more profitable and on the clinical side we can treat more patients than ever before because it's brought it That's to a level to where you have a, a broader patient base and and with you know looking at it as far as being that you know i'm definitely the the kind of pioneer cowboy style um without a doubt and that's just kind of what i've the role that i've and i enjoy kind of in that with research and development um and there's always you know risk but the risk is manageable now uh with the data files we have oh, calc- and, calc- and, calc- yeah, calc- and yeah and it's yeah and we can you know if 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 we did something and, and say we did have failure because nothing we still have today um in dentistry is a hundred percent guarantee we can get right up to it, uh, but it's still not 100% uh, uh, guarantee. And I've seen the, the best of materials and the best of cases fail. And um, I think, you know, we've learned that material differences or the indifferences between materials where we where we create weaknesses. Right. And I think that's why zirconia has been successful because it's monolithic. You know, you know the weakest mm-hmm. link is either the cement, the screw, or the, you know, the tire right. race that breaks. And yep. we go to to try law wrapped acrylic with you know ultra crystal ultra mold in a in a keyed structure everything you look at at that structure just seems to be stronger right it's just it's monolithic everything has chemical bonding so and we compare that right now to wrapped acrylic over titanium we're not right. comparing that to to zirconia just yet because i think zirconia nowadays is, is still a little bit prettier more aesthetic than, than no it's it's it's, bit, it's 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 today it's still the leading restorative material yep. um especially with the the recent advancements in the material you have zirconia options now mm-hmm. uh which makes it mm-hmm. which makes it a, a a pretty big player um as far as aesthetics go mm-hmm. it's i i don't know it, it still leads an edge but i can see you know because uh, again with the uh, here we are today in the same spot that I was sitting 8, 10, 15 years ago, even 15 years ago with the zirconia coping, right? Uh, That zirconia Mm. coping has now (coughs) turned into this uh, uh, zirconia, full 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 structure, uh, full Mm. rehab. Um, Who would have ever thought back then? So if if I'm going to be progressive and kind of forward thinking, I'm not exactly sure what it'll look like and, and how it will come come to be or come about but i definitely can see something going in that direction it's gonna be a hybrid Uh, material it's gonna be some type of yeah yeah i I think so well i i think that you know that we're just getting started and here we are i mean seriously like we 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 need to have you guys back on (laughs) if you would be good with that because we're running we're running out of time i could do i could do hours (laughs) see and then i know i know like i feel like we haven't even told you it wasn't gonna work and we're gonna go oh we're sorry (laughs) yeah well (laughs) no no it's such a good conversation because there's all this discussion going on about market driven right decision making and and from a you know is the market driving this is research driving this what's the balance Mm. you know where do you find that balance how far do you push it is that the 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 risk takers are are showing up on you know um, social media outlets as mm. the tinkerers yeah. and and, right. and and it does paint a false sense of security for the that, laboratory's that would be responsibility true. Right. That it, that, it's, that it's, would be true. I would never do anything. And 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 Mark, if if you look at you know between us two when we're working together, um, you know we're never doing anything. You know as as far as tinkering or or you know taking that unnecessary yeah, chance for person. yeah, but yeah. yeah for that patient. I mean, what we're doing is and when we're, when when I'm working on something, I'm working on it because I believe in it. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and 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 using all of the years of of kind of knowledge that I've seen, and in, in especially in product and, and, uh, development and research and development, um, to to put something together for that restoration that I think that I think in my heart is going to be sound, right? I think yeah, you have to mm-hmm. break the rules to kind of make the rules or rewrite the rules at some point. Otherwise, we'll just all stay stagnant. Yeah. The I think the guarantee our clinicians have is that our reputation is first and foremost. You know, that, that's kind of where you draw the line. Am I just going to go into this material I can buy offshore for half the price? Never going to happen. <coughs> but right. with, you know, Jack and I combined experiences for, yeah. like, you know, 50 years in this industry. So right. we challenge each other. You know, would this work? Yeah, I think it will work. No, I don't think it will work. And I think the, the value for our clinicians and our patients is that we're going to come up with a better material. Right. And, but we also kind of have an idea with the technology now what not to do. And I think the technology is guiding us or keeping us within the parameters where we should be. Well, we have good guidelines. Now we have good guidelines. And because, too, I think today we see more of these restorations than we've ever seen before in the treatable public, right? Mm -hmm. So if we take all of that data and everything that we've seen in all of our experience and all of our experience with the restorative options that we've had over the last 20 years, um, I I think the the writing's on the wall for somebody to put together a a pretty great material. And and Yeah, well, and and we know that it has to be approaching this point because, you know, it's one thing for, as Wes said, and this is one of our pet peeves, is for somebody to get on social media and say, here's a before, here's an after. I made it on my little home mill and my little home <laughs> office with my little home printer and my little you know, tinker toy stuff. That's cool. Not saying that that's not mm. cool, and it might be amazing, but where it really becomes uh, that this is this is working is when a laboratory commits to a product like this and stands behind it. As you said, Conrad, your reputation rides on these restorations. If you say to your doctors, hey, this is what I would put in my mom's mouth or this is what I recommend for this case, you know that if there are failures that you're gonna have to deal with that somehow, whether it's you taking on that cost, whether it's the doctor, whether it's shared, whatever, there's a reputation regardless of the money that comes behind this. And so we know that it's pushing in in that direction because when we see laboratories like you guys with that experience with zirconia, basically getting out of that comfort zone with zirconia and saying, no, we think this is what's coming and we're going to invest in the technology, that Mm -hmm. says a lot to us because we're ahead of that being published in the Journal of Prosthetic Dentistry. We're ahead of that even being published in a lot of dental materials journals. We're seeing the, the companies making these materials, the labs are, are saying, hey, we know enough to know that this should work right. and that's it is true. working in our testing. And so we're gonna forge ahead. And the thing that's interesting is to see, you know, that now we are, we're basically gonna be seeing the research lag behind several years of actual clinical outcomes. Yeah. And, and that is a very different place for that's dentistry place, than yeah. where we were 20 years ago, to even 10 years sure ago. Is where everyone was sort of waiting for that next thing. And, and, and so what we need to do is we need to have you guys back. That would that'd be And awesome. what we need to talk about, I, I, I imagine talking about would be, okay, so let's, w- some more clinical things, okay? Some more things that people need to know about how to make these types of restorations more predictable. And I'd also like to talk a little bit too about if, because a lot of our listeners are in the dental school and residency environment. Mm-hmm. And I'd like to talk a little bit about what do you do if you wanna learn this kind of dentistry and get good at it. How do you do that as a you know a new doctor or even somebody who's just never done this before right. and you want to get involved with it because training and and clinical t- clinical techniques and working with a laboratory and understanding the materials and then which materials do you use you know it all starts with education. I think we could we could really get a lot of, really from good. a laboratory that sees this kind of work you know what's working. You also know what kind of training people are getting, and you're probably providing some training as yeah, well. Yeah. Get into that. Save it. Save it. Yeah, yeah. Save it. <laughs> got, right. He was about save to go. He was like, save episode. it. I could see it. I was just getting, I was just getting the list. The, the, the one episode two, the yes. teaser. Give him the teaser. Guys, I've, I've got a good answer. We know. That's we good. We know that when you listen to this, back. this type of podcast, like this, the, our listeners are hearing this, and they're excited because they yeah. want to help our patients out. You know, right, the yeah. next lady that walks in or the next guy that walks in and they're like, man, I, I'm going to lose my teeth. 
Mm. And you want to give them the next best thing, you know, the closest Mm. thing, so that they can walk out the door and walk down the road Mm. and bite into an apple, bite into a steak, and have a good time and not think. Yeah. Right. Think that they can't do that because right. that's what we mm-hmm. want to... That changes it a life. changes a life. We've all seen that. All of us have on this show. And, and we're and super excited And I'll close with this. You know, my, my advice, because I do a lot of public speaking for, for dental implants especially, is don't say no to the case. Yeah. Find somebody that you know, somebody like Jack or somebody like me or a guy down the road that you know have done a lot of these, especially lab techs, because yeah. they can guide you through the process because Mentor. we're, you know, we're chair side quite a bit. But the technology right now gives almost all of us yeah. the ability to do these cases. You know, artistry is still artistry, but technology and implemented correctly has made these cases extremely predictable. And they've been awesome. very, very successful. Yeah, and, yeah. and what we're doing right now, I mean, this is this is what is is very close to my heart. Um, I do it with technicians, and of course, I do it with clinicians. I do it with residents because we we get to work with a lot of the programs. Um, it's this sharing of information. Uh, that I love because it's it's this is what as an industry and ultimately the the down down the line the the benefactor of that is the patient uh, is what makes us so great right and and, and I'm so passionate about dentistry uh, and, and sitting here right now is 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 we're all talking um, you know to me and, and sharing this information is 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 priceless. Yeah. yeah so it, 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 where mm-hmm. where can our listeners to kind of close out from your guys in? Where can our listeners find out more about you guys and what you're doing? Easiest way is probably just absolutedentallab.com. Uh, our website is is very uh, broad. Mm. We've got all the information there, and they can contact both of us through that, or mm-hmm. just Jack at absolutedentalservices.com yeah. or Conrad at absolutedentalservices.com. And you know, even if you don't use our lab and you just want to have advice, if you have an in-house lab and you don't know how to do it, CONUS, you know, that's one of those things we, we got on the CONUS train early. If you have need advice, you know, even if you don't use us, you know, that's, that's we didn't why even we get there. the CONUS, did we? We were having we such a good time. Conus, <laughs> no, yeah. I'm Conus sitting next to the CONUS master right now. We <laughs> yeah. didn't even get the CONUS. CONUS is a whole yeah, other master who lost his hair on the way there. Well, so listen, if you're listening to this show right now, and you've heard something you like, and you know a friend that needs to, you know, take it to the next level. Uh, send them the show. Send them the show link. That's how people find out about the dental guys. Um, if you would head over to Facebook and uh, hit, hit us up there with a question, maybe we'll pass it on to. Well, we will pass it on to Conrad or Jack. And um, and again, you heard how to get in touch with them there if you'd like. Um, also, we can be found at the Dental Guys on Twitter. We can also be found. Uh, um, on Instagram now, and we're uh, new to that uh, realm as well. And so this has been another great show, and we look forward to more um, from Jack and Conrad as they're blazing the trails in new materials, um, bleeding and cutting edge, and <laughs> and proven and proven ways to help treat our patients and help you learn more about predictability and consistency in your practice. So for Conrad. Jack, John, I'm Wes, and we are the Dental Guys. 